Hi, my name is CM Manjunath. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your free website using blogger.com. It is very simple. Let's dive right in. So here it is, the blogger.com. We are going to start with the objectives. Let me tell you what I'm going to cover as a part of this tutorial. We'll start with the step zero, what you're supposed to do even before you start setting up your blogger.com website or even the account, okay? That's step zero. Then step number one is to get you started signing up for your blogger account, setting it up, okay, piece by piece. Then I'm going to talk about the themes that give a structure to your website, a layout, how to keep your menu and all the good stuff, followed by pages and posts. There are pages as well as posts on any given website. You need to understand the difference between pages and posts. Okay. Then we'll talk about adding menu, the navigation right up top on the website, as well as some of the settings. These are the basics you need in order to set up your account and your website for free. Okay. You can make it even more advanced. We can look at it in a future video. But for now, if you stick to these, you should do fine. You should have a full-fledged website. Okay, let's get started. Step zero. Now, before you get into signing up for the blogger account, before you get started with setting up this beautiful website, the number one thing that you should keep in mind is clarity of goals. Now, what is the goal of your website? Do you want to sell products? like Amazon, Flipkart, these are e-commerce websites. So if you want to sell products, then it's called an e-commerce website. The structure, the design, the entire mindset going into building a website like this will be very different from a website, let's say, where you offer a specific service. Let's say I teach digital marketing. That would be very different. I'm selling courses yet. It's not products. It's courses, I'm going to enroll people and all that good stuff. So the approach that I would take for building a website where I offer some service, maybe digital marketing agency, then that the, the mindset would be different. The structure would be different. And the, of course, there's a third type as well. The third type of website could be a blog where you could be following your passion, your proficiency, which also has some profit market for you. So you can blog about something that you are very passionate about, something that you know about that also has some demand in the market so that you can make money. In that case, what you would do is you would write blogs, articles, and you would let advertisements show up on your website. That's how you could make money. So in e-commerce, you sell a product, you make money, right? On the other hand, if you think about a service like digital marketing agency, when you get customers to buy from you, there you have it. It is a separate type of service where you'll make money selling your services. The third type that I'm talking about is setting up your own blog. Now you could do affiliate marketing, which is promoting other people's products or slap some advertisements on your website and earn money. That's monetization. Okay. The second important thing when you're doing this is also clarity of audience. <clears throat> you couldn't stress enough on this one. Okay, this is super important. Be very clear. Who is the target audience that's going to benefit from your website? Who will visit your website? Who is going to buy from you? Who is going to be interested in reading your blogs? You should be very clear about that. The more clarity you have about your goals and your audience, the better it is for you as a website developer, as a digital marketer. That's how you can make progress. So pay attention to those two. Third, look around. What I mean by that is when you want to build a website, let's say I want to build a website about digital marketing agency. I would just go to Google and search for digital marketing agency, digital marketing company, digital marketing consultancy, and just look at the results that come up on Google search engine results page. Just open those links, those results, and see what the website looks like. What's some of the color themes that they've used? What's the kind of font? What is the layout? What is the navigation menu? Have they used a lots of images or mostly text or is it videos? So these, just by looking around, really you'll get a lots of different ideas for you to build your website, okay? So it's a great way to learn what's going on and what would be apt for your website, okay?
Okay, so three things. Remember in step zero, number one, clarity of goals. You got to be super clear about what your website offers. What's the end result of people who visit your website? What will they take from your website? Number two, who is that interested party of your website content? Who's going to be interested in reading your blogs, watching your videos, or buying something from you? Very clear audience targeting. Number three, looking around. Look at your competitors. See what's coming up on the search results. Just opening up the websites, looking at the structure, the layout, the themes will give you some idea about what you should be doing. All right. With that out of the way, let's get started. Action mode. Now we are going to get into action mode. In order to set up your blogger account, remember blogger, blogger.com is a company owned by Google. So if you have a Gmail account, it's a good thing. You can get started. Now, I'm assuming that you already have a Gmail account. If you don't, just go ahead and sign up for a Google account. It's very simple. So first things first, you have to go to Google and search for blogger. Just search for blogger.com. The first result is going to be the blogger.com website. Okay, there we go. Now you have two options. You can either sign in right here by clicking this link or the button on the top right corner, or you can click on this blog if you're creating it for the very first time. Now, uh, because I wanted to show this from the scratch for you folks, I've decided to go with create your blog. So I'm gonna click on create your blog. I'm gonna use my Gmail account. So if you don't have an account, sign up for a brand new Gmail account, it's simple. The first step is choose a name for your blog. This is a title that will be displayed at the top of your blog. Okay, so I'm gonna call this I'll call this Digital Marketing 101, okay? That's what my content on this blog is going to be about. Remember, I told you the goal. In this case, the goal for me is I'm going to set up just a blog, okay? I'll create content, and if there is enough traffic, I may monetize it by running advertisements or maybe doing affiliate marketing, okay? Remember, I told you about three types of businesses at the very high level e-commerce versus a service versus a blog. So this is a normal blog, okay? Okay, so I've come up with a name. It's called DM, which is for Digital Marketing 101 Basics, okay? That works for me, dm101basics.blogspot.com. That is how our website is going to be. So confirm your display name. How do you want your name displayed to readers on your blog? So I'm gonna call this Digital Marketing 101 like so and when you come up with your url in the previous step when we did that there shouldn't be any spaces okay you can use a hyphen but i don't recommend that just one shot letters and numbers that's fine so in this case you can actually have spaces because there's a display name so people can see it okay now click on finish once you do that you've successfully set up your blogger account this is your step number one okay now let's talk a little bit about free versus a paid website what i'm showing you right now this is a free blogger account okay it's going to be dm101basics.blogspot.com that's how the url will be so if somebody asks you hey what's your website's url you'll say it would be dm101basics.blogspot.com but that is not very cool right now, if you want to make it cool, which means it could be something like dm101basics.com without the blog spot in between, then you should invest some money. Now, in order to have a website, you need two major components, two major. One is called your domain name, which is what I just spoke about. Okay, You have to register your domain name called dm101basics, for example. Okay dm101basics.com could be your domain name. Now, while the domain is good, you need to store all the information someplace, right? That, that place where virtually you can place, save text, videos, images, and all that good stuff, that's called your hosting service. So in order to build a website, there are two things you'll need. 
domain name registration and hosting account a server where you can save the information now once you do that you can use various platforms there are different content marketing sorry content management systems such as wordpress and others or even html whatever makes sense to you but these are like the foundations you got to have a domain name and a hosting account okay and if you were to buy that it will cost you money right that's what a paid account is it's more professional and that's what i would recommend actually a paid website but if you're just getting started if you want to wet your feet really get to know what it is about what blogging is about then you could go with blogger.com this is more than enough you get started as you get comfortable as you consistently create blogs and content and you see people coming in automatically your confidence will will go up at that time you can buy a domain name and hosting and then move the data from blogger to those websites as well it is possible so don't you worry about that Now, before we go, go into the theme, let me quickly show you what the website looks like. After themes, there is settings, reading list, other bloggers, other WordPress posts that you could read and all that. If you clicked on this last link that says view blog, do you see that? You click that and boom, on a new tab, blogger is going to show what your website's front end looks like right now. Okay, We haven't added any pages. There's no content at all, if you notice. Right? There's nothing here. We're just getting started. It's very early stages, right? If you click on this menu, you'll notice the name, visit profile, and then report abuse. Okay. These are this is what we have. Now, in a few clicks, we are going to change the whole look of it. Okay, it's going to be interesting. So pay attention. First, we are going to go into theme. Remember, theme is giving a structure to your website the color code and all that to beautify it, to make it appealing when people visit your website. The first one, it says Contempo Light. Okay, that's there by default. What we see right now, that is that, Contempo Light. Okay, now if you choose to change it, you could look at these. Okay, there's the one that's there by default. These are all available options. As you scroll down, you can take a look at that, a color that makes sense to you. Okay, depending, let's say you're, you're about, pastries and cakes and baking stuff if that's what your website is about you could click on that take a look at this and you know you could even see a preview by clicking in here click preview and you'll be able to see how the website looks like if you were to use this theme how your website will look like okay that will give you an idea so i'm not doing that right now i'm going to scroll down a little bit i like to keep it simple So as you can see, there's so many different themes that are available for you, right? So many options available for you. I like it clean, like I said, plain white kind of thing. So I'm gonna go with something like this, okay? Notable light, that's the one, okay? Let me take a look at it, how it looks like in the front end. Looks neat, clean, search box, right there, menu and all that, good. So let me go ahead, I'll install this. How do you install it? Just click on apply. You see how easy Blogger is. Just click apply and boom, it's going to be ready. Okay, it says new theme is applied successfully. You notice that? Now, if you were to go in here to the front end on the other tab, refresh, and you'll notice that the change has happened. Okay, it's plain white. Don't worry, we are going to add something and you'll notice how cool it'll become very soon indeed, okay? But essentially, this is how you would add a theme. Very simple, on the theme section in the menu, click there. On the right side, there are several themes available for you, depending on what your business is about, what color code you would want to use for your website, what might appeal to your target audience, Keep those things in mind and pick one that will work for you. Okay. Now that we are done with themes, let's move on to next step. The next step is the layout. Okay. Now layout is very important. I think before we go into the layout, let me do the pages. That way, when I show you the layout and add some menu, it'll make sense to you. Okay. So 
let's talk about pages. What are pages? Pages are static information. For example, there will be a home page on a website, on any website. On this page, usually it'll be about what that business is about. Correct? What are the different courses? Now, you know your business better. You know your niche better. So it's always important for you to be clear about what goes into the homepage. If you don't know what to put in there, use the same logic. Just go to Google, search for whatever niche yours is. For example, in my case, digital marketing, digital marketing update, digital marketing news, for example. I would look at all the different websites that are there. So let's see, I'll do digital marketing. And just search for digital marketing news. There's something marketing drive. Let me open it up just to see what the website is about. As you can see, they have images, images, text, more like a blog, which is what I want my website to be like. So there's no harm I could choose something like this. And they have menu right up top like this. Okay. So they're giving a blog like the recent blog, maybe a featured blog, whatever the case is, and then list of blogs, all the latest blogs, as you can see right here, it says latest blogs. Okay, so I like this. So I may, I may want to emulate this. Okay, I'm not saying you should copy the design exactly like that, but you could get motivated, get inspired by those designs and use them on your own website design. Okay, let's do that. So on the homepage, first of all, on the left side, if you go to pages, you click there, we are going to create a new page. Okay, we are going to create a new page. How do you do that? On the top left, if you notice, it says plus new page. Okay, create a new page, click that. And now I'm gonna call this home. Okay, let me move my screen right here. As you can see, I've called it home. Okay, just type it in. This is the body. It's very, very simple. Just like you'd use Microsoft Word, for example, you'll notice bold italics and underline and all that formatting stuff, very similar to what you are already familiar with. Okay, you can type in a bunch of things. For now, I just want to get started. So I'm not going to type anything in the body. Okay. On the right side, if you notice, it says publish. I'm going to click publish. Confirm. We've created our first home page. Congratulations. Okay, I want to create another page. Okay, and this I'm going to call this SEO. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do SEO Google Ads, maybe email marketing. That's it. We're going to keep it free for now. So, have phone, SEO, another category of naming option would be Google Ads. Like so, this is Google Ads. I call this BBC. Pay per click, publish, confirm. I'm going to do one more email marketing. Like so, publish. Confirm. So now we have four pages, home page, SEO, PDC, email marketing, and I can change this because I've made all the title lists, let me know what cases are updated. You see button from publishers, what I mean is the page already exists, we just update the content on that. Awesome, okay. And one last thing that we have, we call that contest, okay? Like so. So we have homepage, SEO, PPC, email marketing, and contact us. Boom. We are good. Nice. Okay. I'm going to go to the front end like so, and then refresh it. As you can see, nothing really happened here. We don't see the menu or anything like that. Right. On the other hand, on the right side, you have the about me, which is a profile, but there's nothing about the menu. Okay. So now you know about the pages. Pages are static information. Things that don't change much, remember, on your homepage, for example. If you're a digital marketing agency, you're not going to change it to a blog about movies or entertainment, right? That's not how it works. So your website, again, that's why you need to have very clear goal even before you build your website. Now that you're clear about what goes into your website, you can ensure that the pages on your website provides information about what's in it for the customer. Always remember that. When people visit your website, they read your homepage, your about page, they should know what they will get. What's in it for me if I were to read your website content? What's, is it really helping me? What am I looking for? If what I'm looking for and what you offer on your website matches, you know what? You have a loyal fan. You would have a person who would visit your website more frequently, probably even buy from you in the future. So very important target audience and your content that you put out, put out on your homepage, your about page, your website needs to be in line with their requirement. Very important that. Okay. So moving on, the next type I spoke about is posts. We've seen pages. You click on posts. 
When you do that, this button will now change to new post. Okay, instead of new page, it says new post. You could click on that and start creating a post as well. Okay. I call this one on page SEO. So we have one blog post as well, okay? Just to give you an idea. So now we have pages, we have posts. What are posts? Posts are dynamic information. Pages are static information, things that won't change much. Think about it. If you're writing about your own self on your blog, it's about you. Would it change much? Not, not, not very frequently, right? Your background, your work experience, those things will pretty much remain the same. You may update it if you get a certificate, for example. You learn digital marketing, you got a certificate from a course that you completed, maybe you would update that. But most of the times, the content on your pages, whether it's your homepage, your about page, your product or services page, will usually remain the same, right? Whereas posts, posts are dynamic information. What that means is, you would provide information that's in the market right now. Things like updates, news, any events that are happening. Those kinds of data, those kinds of information that's right now happening, latest updates, those kinds of things go into the blog post. Okay, So there is pages, which has static information, changes very rarely. Posts, which are dynamic information, where you are provide updates and news about your product, your services, your own company or brand as well, okay? So with that out of the way, let's get into, you see we've closed pages and posts. Now I'll show you layout, okay? On the left side, go into the layout, right? Like so. Let me move this up. Okie dokie. This is the actual structure of your website. That's what a layout means, okay? Header, you see this part, I hope you can see this, this column right here, or the row actually, the horizontal row that you see right here, is what you see up here, okay? We have digital marketing 101. That is what here the header is about. So if you clicked on this little pen icon, you're going to see this visible, show page header, check that blog title, you're giving it a proper title so that people get to know what your blog is about. If you remember when we created the account, Blogger itself asked for this information. So you provided that information and it's already there, right? You could also add images, okay? You can add like a logo for your website if you have one, okay? And you can place the title and description behind that logo. Instead of that logo, you can replace the logo with the title or the, the image can, be repl can replace the title and description and so on and so forth. Then click on save button. I'm not making any changes, but you may choose to do so if you have a logo or something, okay? Scroll down, you'll notice the subscription. Right now, this is not active. Remember I told you in July, 2021, Google is going to stop this. Feed burner is going to stop this. So you can remove it off, okay? I just clicked on that pencil or pen, whatever that is, and removed it. That's gone, okay? So we have nothing in here. Page list, okay? This is an interesting one. This is what your navigation is, your menu is about, okay? As you can see, we created all those pages, remember? Home page, about page, contact page, SEO, Google ads, or PPC, email marketing, none of those appear in the menu right now. If I clicked on this, there also you wouldn't notice anything, okay? Which means, the menu needs to be manually added. That's what we're going to talk about, how to do that, okay? So I'm gonna go back to the back end like so. And here, if you notice, it's says page list top. Click on this little pen or pencil icon like so. And in the visible, there's a checkbox that says show page or show pages. I'm gonna click on that. You don't need to give a title. We don't want to have like a title for the menu, okay? It's totally optional. I'll uncheck home. Instead, I'll select our home that we created, the page, then SEO, PPC, email marketing, contact us, and blog, all that. As you check each one of these page titles, on the right side, they'll be added. And the good thing is, we could move these around the way we want it, okay? So for example, home, SEO, PPC, email marketing, I like all of that, let it be the way it is, but I want to move the contact us as the last mini option. So all you need to do is just click here, 
drag it and drop it like so. Very simple, just drag and drop, right? Scroll down and you'll see a save button, boom. And once you save it on this page, at the bottom right corner, right here, if you notice, there is a save icon. Click that. Now, if you go to the front end, keep an eye on this. You see there is no menu right here, no menu underneath this either, okay? I'm going to refresh just to show you what happens. Boom. You see that? We have the home, SEO, PPC, email marketing. All these become your navigational menu. So if you entered some, if you, if you have some content on each of these pages, if I were to click on this, for example, guess what? It'll show the content of that page. Right now, it is empty because I did not type in anything. Remember? It's just blank right now. By default, it'll be on blog like so, okay? You can go to the home page, that's your home page, and so on and so forth. So this is called your navigational menu. It's very important for you to focus on the navigational menu. It helps both the users who visit your website, as well as when Google search engine or other search engine bots, crawlers come to the website, they'll know what's on the menu. It's like the main entry to the different pages within your website, okay? When you have the navigational menu options, Google will be able to or search engine crawlers will be able to understand the pages, they'll click go visit those pages. So extremely important to have proper navigational structure. Also, you don't want to overdo it, okay? It should be five plus or minus two. What I mean by that, your menu, the number of menu options should be between three and seven only, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, which is good. So you can have five plus or minus two, remember that. Page list right up there, page body and all that good stuff. Now, if you don't want these things, remember I told you about this little thing right here. If you do not want this about me, archive and all that, you may remove them, okay? These are called your widgets and Google Blogger, sorry, Blogger calls it gadgets on the sidebar. It doesn't matter, okay? We can remove this just by clicking on this little pen or pencil icon, remove, okay? So don't worry too much. If you want to add something, you can always add it later. Okay, just by clicking on this add gadget, there's a bunch of different things you can choose from. Okay, so don't you worry about removing these stuff. All right, so there it is. That's all layout is. You can add something to the footer. Maybe you'll have your social media icons and stuff like that. If you want to add them, you could do that too. Okay, so now, We've covered the layout part, pages and posts, menu also, you know how to add or delete. Let me show you how to delete if you want to remove a menu, scroll up. Remember, it is in the page list, okay? Page list is your navigation, okay? Click that. On the left side, all you need to do is just uncheck that, for example, like that. Okay, there we go. If I go to the front end, do a refresh, you'll notice that the blog will be gone. There we go. Okay, now it's home, SEO, PPC, email marketing, and contact us. That's fine, all right? So that's about adding and deleting menus. The last thing I wanted to talk about was the settings. Le settings are interesting. Scroll down all the way, right here on the left side, click on settings. Things like the title. Remember, we gave a title called Digital Marketing 101 when we set up the account. So that's going to be there by default. You can change it anytime you want right here okay settings title description you can give a proper description here it allows up to 500 characters characters are letters numbers and spaces as well but i don't type that anything here so just to show you i'm going to save it it'll appear right underneath here let me ref refresh this it, it'll appear right underneath this. If you have like a tagline or something, you could add it, okay? So it's completely up to you. I usually don't, not my kind of style. So I'm gonna remove it like so and save it. You could use keywords there as well. So yeah, blog language is English. There's a bunch of things. You can add a fav icon. Fav icon is what you see right up here. You see for blogger, it has that B, big B, right? I, I don't prefer that, for example. I, I would change it rather to something I like because if you know what I'm talking about, you see, if I go to Google, for example, or Gmail, sorry, you'll notice that it'll have the 
Gmail icon. If it's Facebook, you will see the letter F. Okay. So if there are multiple tabs open on your browser window, just by looking at the fav icon, your users can see your, that's your website. Okay. They could easily click and get there. If all of them have the same B, you know what? They're going to get confused. They, they wouldn't know which tab has your content on which tab your website is open. So it's, it's a good idea to have a fav icon. So what I'm going to do is click on choose file. I'm going to pick something from like, so I have my own. This should be less than 100 KB. Just remember that. Okay. Save it. Done. It's done. So that's about the favicon. As you scroll down, there is privacy. What this means is, do you want your website to be visible to search engines? So when people go to Google and search for, let's say, Digital Marketing 101, learn digital marketing for beginners. So those are some of the keywords that I want to use on this blog. Now, if I turn this off, if I slide it off, what will happen is Google will not show my website, this website right here, on the Google search engine results page. And that's not a good idea. Okay, So always keep it on so that your website is discoverable by Google search engine. And when somebody searches on Google, they should be able to find your website, okay? Publishing, blog address, this is my blog address. This is the URL. If somebody asks, what is your blog address? I would say dm101basics.blogspot.com, okay? Remember I told you you could have your own custom domain like dm101basics.com, your own website without the blog spot, okay? If you wanted that, you can click on this custom domain and buy a domain. So Google offers you to buy the domain through their business, right? You could buy it from there. HTTPS is Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, HTTPS. So Google gives a little extra focus. It, it likes when your website has an HTTPS, okay? So instead of having HTTP cmmanjunath.com, instead of that, if I had HTTPS cmmanjunath.com, it is more likely to satisfy the search engines as well as the users who visit your website. It's a secure version. So they'll feel more secure on your website. Okay. So if somebody typed HTTP cmmanjunath.com, I'm automatically redirecting to HTTPS cmmanjunath.com. That's what HTTPS redirect does. Okay. So have these two on privacy and HTTPS. You can give permissions. For example, right now, I'm the admin of this website. It'll have my credentials. You could invite more authors, for example. Could say something like cmanjanath at gmail.com, for example, right? If I sent it, what will happen is on my other email ID, on my Gmail account, I would have received an invite to become an author of this website. So if I accepted that invite, on the pending author invites, it'll say received, and I could start making changes to this website. Okay, so you're giving other people also the permission to update content on your website. Okay, so those are the few things that I want to discuss about. The rest of it is very self explanatory posts, comments, and how do you want to track all those? How do you want to manage all those settings? Okay, so now you know how to build your really good website using blogger.com for free, okay? And you know how to add a theme to make it nice and colorful. You know how to add menu right up here, like so, okay? And you know the difference between pages and posts. You know what a fav icon is, right? So you learned about layout, themes, pages versus posts, menus, settings, and everything that you need to know to get started on Blogger. So the point is, don't wait anymore to learn more. You learn more as you do, okay? You learn more as you do. So go ahead, sign up, do these basics. You can do this in what, less than 20 or 30 minutes, and then start creating content. That's what matters. The more content you create, the more consistently you create, Google will start noticing your website and it will show up when people search for the keywords that you're targeting, okay? All the best to you. My name is CM Manjunath. I'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.